Okay, so this is just a little practice quiz to remind you about what you're supposed to know so far. Later on today, we're going to be talking about uh, real-world applications. That's the official thing we got to learn, but this is a practice quiz. All right, on the first one and two, all I want you to do is write out the formula in like a normal function or, sorry, sequence notation. U sub 1 equals 27, U sub n is equal to blah, 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 okay? That's all you got to do for one and two. When you get to number three, it says put these in the calculator at the same time. Put in problem one as u and problem two as v. Now, you may not know what that's talking about. Everybody grab your calculator for a second. Go to the y equals screen. And do you notice that there's two places you can put things in? There's these are u's. Oh, I made it disappear somehow. There we go. These two, why isn't it writing? I guess I'm circling it with my little cursor. Uh, these two are U's. The next two down are V's. And so you can enter two different formulas at once. One of them's the U sequence and one's the V sequence. The only thing is a lot of people end up typing in on the V sequence. You get so used to writing U sub N is equal to U sub N minus one that they'll do that again on the V sequence. But if it's a V, then it's V sub N is equal to v sub n minus 1. Don't forget to use a v in the v form. Okay, then uh, see if you can find u sub 90 and v sub 90. I know this stretches you a little bit on the technology part because you haven't ever entered two sequences before. But the rest of it, you should be golden. I'll pause while you do that. Okay, here's the first couple answers. Check yourself. For the black one, the number one, it's u sub 1 equals 27. Quiet, please. u sub n equals u sub n minus 1. And this one is plus 3. You don't have to put that in parentheses, but I did. Don't have to. All right. Then you don't put this in the calculator, but you do put it in your, uh, your function where n is greater than or equal to 2. Remember, that's always one bigger than whatever that was because this only works on the second term on, okay? How many of you, be honest, forgot to put your domain in there? Okay, don't do that on the test, because that costs you points. You gotta have the domain. Okay, the red one, and thanks for being not scared and being honest that you made that mistake. U sub one equals 25. U sub n, U sub n minus one. And this one's times by point, what? Point nine. And I could have got that by taking this divided by that. Okay. Then I need where n is greater than or equal to 2 because this number is always one bigger than the last number. Okay. Now, put these in the calculator at the same time. I've got mine in, and it should have looked like this. Uh, and let's see. I've even got a W function in there, so to not confuse you, I'm going to just delete that one out. I made three in one of my hours. Okay, so we've got our U and our V. That's two different sequences. And now if I do table settings, I can go to the 90th row of the table, and I can look at it that way. Take a while. There is a faster way, by the way. Done. I'm going to pause just in case this takes a long time. Okay, it didn't take that long. Here it is. Uh, so our 90th uh, term would be 294 for the use of n and 0.00212. And I just learned something. One of our esteemed students in the front row just showed me that if I go up in here, no, I always I have to go down. What do I do? Go over to the right? up to the top, uh, there we go, and got up in there, then you see how the formula pops up underneath? U sub n equals U sub n minus 1 plus 3, so it tells you what your formula is. So if you ever mess your formula up, you don't have to go all the way back to the y equals screen, because then it'll make you like reload the whole table. You could just change it right here. So if I realize I want to change that to like uh, hit enter to get into it, and then I can go over here and mess with it. All right, that's pretty cool. Thanks for showing me that. I learn new things all the time, and you shouldn't. That's one of the reasons why you shouldn't be shy about asking things, 
because I'm in the process of learning stuff too. Because you guys are usually teenagers are known for being really good at this technology stuff. So I need to be willing to put my pride aside and learn from you guys. And you need to put your pride aside and learn from me when you have questions for me. So, all right. So here's the other thing I want to show you that's faster than this whole chart thing. I go to second quit. Everybody, go to second quit and clear off your screen. All right, now, here is a faster way. It, te it just saves you time. You know the waiting time when the little worm is crawling up the wall on the right-hand side there? We can do this. U sub 90, end parentheses, and you don't even need that end parentheses, by the way. It's kind of weird glitch, but it'll work. Hit enter, and it only thinks for a few seconds, and it tells you that you're 94. See what I mean? So if you ever know you want a specific spot, like the 5,000th row of the table, if you do the, the table settings way, it's going to have to think through every answer up to 5,000 until it finally hits that one. This way, it only has to compute the one. See what I mean? All right, so, yes. All right, then there's something wrong on your Y equals screen if you do that and it doesn't work. Now I'm going to do V sub, that's right above the 8, V sub 90. Enter. And poof, there it is. Oh, oh, 2, 1, 1. Now, why is that different than the chart? Because the chart said, oh, oh, 2, 1, 2, because the chart rounded. All right. So to prove my point, I'd like you to figure out now what the 5,000th term is for the U. U, 5,000. Now, it's still taking a while. It's just I'd, I'd encourage you to think about how long this would have taken. If it's just taking this long to do this one, if you do the table, I think the reason it's going faster on this than on the table is on the table it's calculating all the values and actually recording them in a table for all of the, like, the ones that are on the screen. You know what I mean? The screen holds, like, 10 of this row and 10 of the other row. So looks like this isn't going to save me a ton of time. Depends on which addition of the calculator you have. Who's done already? The calculator of yours is already done? Which one's yours? CI 84 plus. I think that's the fastest. Was it, oh, did you, does yours win? Oh, ah, there you go. Looks like they haven't got that dense fire with like mega memory in it or anything. All right, so, ah, finally mine's done. Ah, it's kind of like popcorn. They're all going off in the class all over the place here. Okay, it took longer than I thought. So maybe it does calculate each one out between here and there. But I can tell you this much. Every time I've done it, when you do it this way, it's faster than the table. That's all I can tell you for sure. Maybe it's calculating for the table. It has to remember all the values that it's going to display on the table, which is like, you know, like the first one you wanted plus like 10 other ones. Maybe that's the reason it's faster. Okay, enough of that. Um, next thing I got to get across to you is looking at real world kind of problems. In a real world problem like this, let's say I have $200,000 to invest. I would use this first big arrow is to point out a difference than normal. I would use use of zero on this kind of a problem. Anytime you are dealing with time, it's a good idea to use use of one, or sorry, use of zero. Because if I put in this $200,000 into some investment, let's say I buy Apple stock with it or something, uh, that goes in on day zero of my, you know, is a good way to think of it. That's the beginning. That way, here's my list of what happens. If it grows by here, the 0.2, the 20%, uh, if it grows by that, here's the first. If I put this as U sub 1 and this is U sub 2, and then I say, what happened after year 1? You're really supposed to look here. And doesn't that, it's not intuitive, right? If I ask for year one and you're supposed to look up U sub two, that's a little goofy. That's why it's smarter to start with U sub zero on a problem like this. Because if I start with U sub zero and then this is U sub one, and I ask you what do I have at, at the end of year one, it's intuitive, U sub one. All right, so moral of the story, use U sub zero when you're doing problems that involve time in the real world. Or use the year it happened in. We're going to show you another one like that a little later. 
go on to the next video here.